this is a virtual coaching session on the topic of activity scheduling and the tool is called the Gantt chart. This module is intended for people who have completed the PMD Pro 1 course and who have passed the examination. The emphasis on these modules for coaching are to encourage transfer of learning and application on the job. I want to start with this question of application. Please tell me, have you been using the project management for development professional tools? Indicate yes if you have been using the PM tools since the PMD Pro 1 course. Indicate no if you have not been using the PMD tools since the PMD Pro 1 course. What project management tools are you using? Please indicate from this list the tools that you've been using. Work breakdown structure, risk register, issues log, project charter, decision gates, log frames, network diagrams, critical path analysis, change process mapping, Gantt chart, RACI diagram or other, and please write in what the other tool might be. Are you experiencing success and or failures using the project management for development professional tools. What have been your successes using the project management tools? And what have been any frustrations or challenges using the PM tools? Now that we've checked in to get an idea of how you are applying project management and the tools, I will start now on the Gantt chart. Think back to your reading of the PMD Pro 1 guide and the study that you did for the course and tell me what are the primary components of a Gantt chart. You may not have exactly what I have up on the screen now, but I hope that you were able to come up with at least one or two of these points and you may have very well come up with some additional ones. Let me start by telling you an interesting piece of trivia that the inventor, the source of the Gantt chart and the name is Henry Gantt who lived in eight, from 1861 to 1919. Motivation. Invent a tool and your name may live on forever. So the components of a Gantt chart are uh, a graphical illustration of a schedule that helps to plan, coordinate, and track specific tasks in a project. So just like a log frame or a work breakdown structure or any number of other tools that we've talked about, the tools have 
a format for graphical illustration. That illustration shows a sequence of events in order in which the task need to be completed. It's composed of a vertical axis representing the task that make up the project and then it's made up of horizontal bars of varying lengths representing the sequences and time span for each task. The Gantt chart uses the content of the work breakdown structure. Remember when we talked about the work breakdown structure we said that it is probably the foundational tool for detailed project planning because you have to first break down the project so that it includes all the work that's necessary during implementation. So all of the details then become the vertical column on the Gantt chart. One of the elements of a Gantt chart is called a milestone. What is a milestone? Another way of saying milestone or synonyms would be milepost, waypost. A common one is benchmark. Sometimes we talk about benchmarking, a marker or an event. It literally means a stone at the side of a road that shows the distance to a particular place. So as you're driving in a car or walking, you may see these and they look different in different countries. Uh, but usually there are milestones, so it should be a familiar concept. Milestones signal their signals that indicate distance traveled and direction of travel. Milestones are an event that raises special attention. Milestones show whether the project is on schedule for completion of a key deliverable and milestones are a point or points where corrective actions can be taken. Milestone is a foundational concept in the Gantt chart. So take a look at this work breakdown structure and try to identify the milestones. That was a bit of a misleading question because there aren't really any milestones in the work breakdown structure. The work breakdown structure primarily shows the project scope, the actual work that needs to be done in order to produce the product scope. So the work breakdown structure, while it may show the what, mostly is indicating the how. So what I've done here is basically just take the statements, probably you would call this level the work packages in this case, and I've turned them into the products or services that will be produced. So you have arrange for facilitators, that would be facilitator arrangements confirmed, arrange for participants, the final product or service would be participant arrangements confirmed, and then arranging venue and equipment, that would be venue and equipment arranged. So milestones are not the project scope, they're not the how. We'll deal with that later. Milestones are the products and services or the scope, the what. I hope that's clear. Now to see if you understand or to see what you already know about a Gantt chart, 
I'd like you to look at this example of milestones and I'd like you to draw a Gantt chart using these milestones including the start date and the due date or end date. You should have drawn something that looks like this in its simplest format. If you look here, what I've done is I've taken the start date and the end date, due date, and I've put it onto a calendar that goes from Monday, the 6th of January, 2014, through Friday, 10th of January, 2014. 14. And then I've indicated the starting point and the finishing point on each of the milestones and drawn a, an, a line for each of them. So you'll see that that's a very simple representation and in its most basic form those bars are what a Gantt chart is all about. However, you probably want to represent more of the, the work that has been broken down in your Gantt chart. So I'd like for you now to take a look at the first level of work that has arisen from the milestones and I'd like you to add the bars that include the start date and the finish date to your Gantt chart. Again, I hope that was a fairly simple task because it turns out that the bars are exactly the same for the milestones and the highest level, the work packages. So you should have produced a Gantt chart or the bars that look something like this. Now I'd like you to add bars for the subtask that are listed underneath the highest level tasks. If you did that successfully, you will now have a Gantt chart that looks something like this so that you now can get a picture of not only when the milestones are due and when the highest level work needs to be done, but you can also see when some of the tasks need to be started and finished. So for example, on the first work package of a range facilitator, you'll see that the start of Identify Facilitator and the finish is on Monday the 6th. Finalizing the timetable is on Tuesday the 7th. Invite the facilitator is on Tuesday the 7th. Arrange Transport is on Wednesday the 8th. And that is the first work package. And you can go down and do that on each of the other work packages.